I'm Micah Cora. I'm a mechanical engineering and computer science student at the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Hi, I'm Lee, and I'm a computer science student. I'm from China, Xi'an Jiao Tong University. Hi, I'm Mickey Bassey, and I'm a mechanical engineering student at Carnegie Mellon University. So we're all here working in the Robust Adaptive Systems Lab with uh, Dr. Nathan Michael and his team of grad students. In the Robust Adaptive Systems Lab, we do a wide variety of quad rotor research. Our goal is to be able to run quad rotors outdoors autonomously, and there are a variety of problems involved. For instance, SLAM, simultaneous localization and mapping, which means understanding the environment around you and where you are in it. Also, state estimation, which is understanding your position, velocity, etc. And on top of that, we do a lot of planning work that will eventually allow us to run quad rotors persistently outdoors. Yeah, so this is our Vicon motion capture system, which allows us to test out trajectories and more complex algorithms than the quad rotors. The goal of the project that I'm working on is to be able to get quad rotors to fly persistently for days at a time, uh, covering waypoints and recharging autonomously. Okay. Uh, so they're going to take off, uh, hover in place to trim for a minute, and then they'll start, uh, go to different altitudes and start running the plant. There we go. The test should run fine from here. So this applies to agriculture and security operations and such where, for instance, you might take in quad rotors to map out a field over the course of a day and you'll find out one area is too dry and you try to respond to that. But it will cost a ton of money to take the people in again to do that. What we would like people to do is have the quad rotors run persistently and have those updates in almost real time. So Derek Mitchell, the grad student who I've been working with, has uh, been working on the planning for the problem, which is a variant of the traveling salesman problem. And from that, what I get is a schedule. So this will run until the batteries die, at which point they will land automatically. So my work has involved running those plans on the quad rotors and also getting the quad rotors working using minimum snap trajectories and testing the performance of the quad rotors. Yeah, so now it'll automatically go to that landing pad. And this summer, I've uh, studied in Field Robotics Center with Dr. Nathan Michael. And mo my project is about to make the quad rotor adapt to the wind. We have seen the video that's making made that when the quad rotor, when a quad rotor fly on another quad rotor, the wind condition changes and the quad rotor will crash. Uh, because quad rotor is very popular test bed for the small UVA development, but existing control. Uh, control approach often ignore the aerodynamic effect, so the car motor just can fly in a very slow velocity and just indoor environments. We want to improve the controllability of the car motor. Even the wind condition changes, we can fly it very well. This setup consists of two parts, and this part is a low cell. We can get the force data from the from it and the proper the motor the motor and the speed controller. We can got the current and the voltage and the, the current and the voltage of the motor and the velocity of the proper from it because this arm's length is equal to this arm. So when the proper goes, the thrust from here is equal to the force from here. And yes, and use this setup we can do some sta static model, static test. So in this static test, we often send the different voltage of the mo voltage to the motor and to make the vo velocity of the proper from different, and we can do some data process. Besides the static test, we also have some fun to produce the wind from this direction. The wind will from this direction and this direction because all the wind direction can decompass from this two direction and the different strengths and we can figure out the dynamic model of the router. And after that, uh, we will do some simulation and do some simulation to see the results and then um, to come to the real core router. My name is 
Mickey Bassey, and I'm a mechanical engineering student here at Carnegie Mellon University. And um, I work here in the Robust Adaptive Systems Lab, doing mechanical, uh, working on mechanical subsystems for the quad rotors. So one of the main things that we're trying to do here is making these robots fly for uh, long periods of time in diverse environments. It can be inside a building, outside in the forest, in a wide open field. But the robot has to be able to fly autonomously through these, and so there are a lot of challenges for that. And well, as for you know, flying in these diverse environments for long periods of time, um, this can be used for a variety of reasons. Um, it can be used for security, agriculture, even monitoring wildlife um, and trying to catch poachers. Um, so these quad rotors, we want them to be able to fly for days and days without the need for a human. Right now, a quad rotor can fly for about 20 minutes, maybe less than that. Um, and so if we want it to fly for a very long time, uh, we need to have it be able to come in, land, and charge just autonomously and then go off and do its thing without a human ever touching it. Very rough charging station just to, uh, and uh, charging apparatus on the robot itself. Some strips of spring steel and form them into loops um, so that when the quad rotor lands, there's no harm of it. It won't harm itself. Uh, and as well as I put in magnets so that there's a secure connection between the charging plate and the spring steel. So no matter what happens, it'll stay connected until it wants to take off. Between from when it lands to when it takes off, um, that's where I come in. I'm trying to figure out the best way for a robot to come in and be able to charge um, while putting as little effort into it as possible. As of right now, the robot has to come in at a specific orientation uh, to be able to charge. For example, if this, if the red loop goes through a black plate, then it might short. So I'm now also think, trying to think of ways for it to be able to come in in any kind of orientation. Uh, another challenge in uh, having these quad rotors fly um, in various environments is the fact that uh, different sensors work for different environments, and you can't have all of them if you on a flying quad, quad rotor if you want it flying through various environments. So I worked on also trying to make a stereo virgins uh, camera swivel system. So for example, when a quad rotor is flying in an environment where there are features that are really close, um, it wants to it should know how far away those features are so it doesn't run into them, uh, so that it knows where it is in relation to that object. Uh, so in that instance, uh, having two cameras, um, having stereo vision, where those two cameras, their field of visions overlap, they can tell depth that way. Uh, but in a situation where there's a wide open environment, features are far away, uh, there's no need for depth. Uh, using more uh, it'd be more advantageous to have that feature in the camera's field of view for longer, which means having a wider field of view, which means having the uh, camera angles go out is more advantageous rather than having a stereo vision.